everyone. Welcome to another episode of Osborne Pro TV. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Windows Server 2022 ISO image onto a VMware Workstation Pro 17. So you have your own virtual instance of the server. Um, so this Windows Server requires a license, but you're able to download an evaluation version for testing and setting up your own environments with. Um, a simple way to get there, you could search download Windows Server ISO and one of your top results is going to be the Microsoft Evaluation Center, which is where you want to download your ISO image from. Um, I've done this already uh, for the sake of time. Uh, it seems like we don't need to enter information anymore. You used to have to put in like your name and an email and things like that, uh, but I was able to just simply click on the download button um, and start the download. Um, so since I have this ISO already, I'm able to use it. The next thing we're going to do is go into VMware Workstation Pro and we can go to File, New Virtual Machine, or if you're a key person like me, just Control N is typically new, um, which opens up our wizard. We're going to select Custom. The reason for this is um, there's not really much of a difference between Custom and Typical, and you're able to ensure things are set correctly this way. So we're going to use custom and click next. The latest version of workstation selected, we're going to keep that. Um, if I were to use say workstation 16 here, and just to give this as an example, there's different limitations on the older versions. And also all of the operating systems are not listed. So just to skip ahead here, um, when we get to this section, uh, I guess because it's VMware workstation 17, it's still here. Um, what I was thinking I was going to see was that we'd only be able to see server 2019. Um, if that is the case, and this is all you see with your workstation version, just select whatever the newest Windows Server version is, and that's going to be the one that's okay to go with. Um, the reason for that is um, VMware Tools needs to install virtual hardware and things like, say, VMware Tools and other virtual hardware onto the operating system. So it has to select the versioning for that and um, going with the newest version is the best thing to do. So we're going with the newest version here as they recommended. Click Next. We're going to install the operating system image later. Your default might be this. Uh, don't select that yet. We're going to select it later on here. Um, so I'll install the operating system later. Click Next. Select Microsoft Windows and then select Windows Server 2022 or whatever server you're installing. Um, if say Windows 2025 comes out and you're still on Workstation Pro 17 here and you don't have 2025 as an option here, select 2022. Uh, and then go to next. We're going to name our server ADDC01 for Active Directory, uh, say domain controller. Um, and then for our location, OneDrive uh, is going to sync our virtual machine to the cloud, which we don't want. That's going to use a lot of bandwidth, and it's unnecessary. So we're going to change this location. If you don't have a separate drive to put these things on, um, you can use your downloads folder. And then we'll select, I created one called virtual in my downloads folder. And then I'm going to make a folder to put this in. So I'll click make new folder, ADDC01 because that's the name of the machine. And I'm going to select that folder and hit OK. And that's where the image is going to be uh, saved in and have its space allocated on. Now I click Next. We're going to use UEFI. That's the recommended as it's the newer version. Um, the mouse works in the BIOS. You don't have mouse functionality. It's all keyboard stuff. And uh, UEFI offers more options as well as other security features. Um, we can use Secure Boot if you want, which prevents Linux um, OSs from booting. Um, so only the Microsoft one is able to load on this hardware instance. Um, so we'll do that just for the heck of it here. And we'll click Next. With your processors, unless an application tells you to do things differently, only assign one core per processor. So I can assign Maybe I have a really heavy intensive server that I know is going to be trucking along. I'll select four processors with one core per processor. Um, that's going to adhere to most of your licensing uh, restrictions. Um, you don't want to do the inverse uh, unless you're told to do so otherwise by an application that you're running. 
So here we're going to go with two processors, one core per processor. Go to next. And I like to go to at least four gigs of RAM at first with my initial setup, just because it makes things uh, faster during the setup process. I can scale it back afterwards to two gigs of RAM if I need to. And I'll click next. Uh, since this is just a home instance, VMware Workstation Pro 17, it's best to use NAT because likely you're just using this on your computer and not in an actual network. So we're going to click next. Uh, VMware by default will recommend the best controller type for the operating system that you've selected. Looks like we only have two choices here for Windows Server 22. SCSI is an older code base while LSI Logic SAS is um, newer and has it's supposed to be a little bit faster. I've heard the dish the differences are marginal. We're going to go with what they recommend here, LSI Logic SAS. Um, and we're going to same deal here. They're going to recommend the best option for operating system. So we're going to go with NVMe. And we're going to create a new virtual disk because we're allocating space to save the ISO image on. And we're going to go with 60 as the recommended size because uh, that's kind of the bare minimum. If you were to set this to like 40, when Windows updates come out the next time, you're not going to be able to update it because you won't have enough disk space. So there's all kinds of issues by setting too small of a disk space. 60 should be the bare minimum you ever set. Um, we're going to split the disk into much, uh, multiple files. If you're using a larger disk, like well, 60 is small, but if you're using like terabytes, chances are you want to use a virtual disk as a single file. Um, and that's just for performance pr purposes. Um, so we're going to go with multiple files here and click next. And uh, this is just the name of our disk file. We're going to keep it the name of the server. It's very common to do that and click next. And now here we want to customize hardware because now we're going to mount our ISO image. And we do that by going to uh, new CD slash DVD SATA. And instead of auto detect, we need to select our ISO file. And we're going to connect it to power on and I have mine in virtual machines server evaluation All right. and we don't need to change anything in this advanced button here it's fine everything selected as is um, you can go to a SCSI or an IDE but um, the best option selected already so we click uh, close because we finished setting our settings and then finish and next thing we're going to do here is boot our machine And we press any key to continue, and that's important to do because um, you'll have to restart. If you miss that window, you'll have to reboot the machine and then press any key. Uh, there's no way around that, unfortunately. And once this comes up, we're going to install the operating system. So select your languages and things of that nature and click next and install now. <clears throat> um, there's going to be... Um, a selection for different versions of the server that you can install here. So there's standard evaluation and the desktop experience, data center evaluation, and the desktop experience of that. The ISO you downloaded is the standard evaluation. There's not much difference between data center and standard. Um, I brought up a couple of the differences here to kind of show you how you could see those. Um, so um, I'll have this link in the description if you wish to uh, look at it more. I did a control F for find on the page and search no so you can see the differences. And there's one, the data center version offers software defined networking and storage spaces direct, which are um, in the data center version. And they basically relate to sharing the, the same thing with load balancing or sharing storage spaces between um, multiple disks so they exist as one. Typically um, they may integrate better with an Azure um, data center version also. But um, I'll have these links in the description if you want to read more about them. Storage Spaces Direct and SDN. And I'll have the comparison table for you also. Um, so we're going to select Standard Evaluation Desktop. Desktop means I'm going to have a GUI to work with. Standard evaluation without desktop is core, which is only going to be like a PowerShell window to work with. 
and um, in some instances that may be what you want however uh, we're going to use desktop because that's what everybody's used to seeing and click next we need to accept the license terms um, and click next next I always select custom install Oop, that was faster than I wanted select the custom install option there uh, you may come in here and if you're in like um, if you're building one of these in e on an ESXi host you may see a bunch of drives here where you need to delete the space um, so that you only have one drive to put these things on uh, so we'll do that and uh, I don't need to do that in mine because it's just on a personal computer here and then we're going to click next and now it's going to start installing the operating system this can be a bit of a time consuming process but um, as soon as this finishes the Windows server is going to boot up and I'll be able to start uh, working with it in my test environment okay so the uh, everything finished installing for the operating system and it rebooted and came back up and now I'm setting a password for the local administrator account and so we're going to do that real quick and I'm just setting that to password one two three exclamation point which is a horrible password now I'm able to log into my machine so I have to press control alt delete to unlock which there's a button up here for that so I'll click on that and then I can sign into the machine and now I'm able to access Windows Server and um, just begin working with my test environment. By default, the VMware Tools is not installed, um, which is why this is not taking up the full window. If you're in a, you know, if you're in a domain environment, and it may be likely that you don't want to install VMware Tools on everything. Uh, there's been issues I've seen with VMware tools causing NICs to get lost and depending on the hardware it's running on and things like that. Um, but uh, if you wish to install VMware tools, we have, is that what this is here? Is, no, this is our drive, so we're going to unmount this. Probably what we need to do here, let's do this. If I right click, install VMware tools. So notice I'm right-clicking on the ADC, ADDC01, which is the machine I just created. Go to Install VMware Tools. And um, I got a couple things on my way down here also. And uh, if I check my drives, there we go. Notice I have my DVD drive down here, and now it's for installing VMware Tools. So I can double-click Setup. And this should begin our setup of uh, the VMware tools installation. And there will be a bunch of things that pop up here. So we basically next, typical is fine. Click next and install. And uh, once this installs, we'll have to reboot uh, the machine most likely. But uh, we'll be able to see this fill up uh, the entire screen. And there'll be some other functionality added like we can drag and drop files and copy and paste and things like that from our host OS. So now it requires a restart. Yes, I want to restart. And that will complete the VMware tools setup. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, like this video and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content. And uh, thank you for watching.